blue skies. <laughs> okay, thank you, God. Okay, and only another 20 minutes. I want to introduce to you now a very special guest. Probably has the most popular Christian radio program in the state of Michigan. A WMUZ radio. I bring to you now Bob Dutko. Thank you so much, Dr. Miller. And thank all of you for being out here today. And yeah, you know, I have to say, as I as I look at you and as I walk around, I'm noticing something that I think we all need to remind ourselves of. I stand here as a Protestant among other Protestants and among other Catholics, and while there may be areas that we may theologically agree or disagree on this point or that point, I notice something today. We stand here united as brothers and sisters in Christ. We stand here in Christ to say, you will not force us to violate our biblical principles. And we stand here as Americans and stay in a united voice. You will not force us to violate the Constitution of the United States. I love the unity that the body of Christ is showing right now. I want to read to you from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, starting in verse 13. Later they sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus to catch him in his words. They came to him and said, Teacher, we know that you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by others because you pay no attention to who they are. But you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it right to pay the imperial tax to Caesar or not? Should we pay or shouldn't we? But Jesus knew their hypocrisy. Why are you trying to trap me, he asked. Bring me a denarius and let me look at it. They brought him the coin, and he asked them, Whose image is this, and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, Give back to Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. And they were amazed at him. Well, you know something? I look at a coin right now. I don't see the image of Caesar. I don't see the image of President Obama or Kathleen Sebelius. I see the words inscribed, In God We Trust. We don't live in ancient Rome under Caesar. We live in a republic called the United States of America with constitutional rights and privileges. Those constitutional rights right now are being violated and are being threatened. And I think about the Apostle Paul in Acts chapter 17 when Paul and Silas had their rights as Roman citizens denied them. They were thrown in prison and if you recall what happened, the magistrates ordered them released because they realized this was not lawful. And what did Paul say to the jailer? He said, wait a minute. You beat us publicly without a trial. You imprison us, which is not lawful, as we're Roman citizens, and they think we're going to go away quietly? No, you tell the magistrates to come down here and escort us out personally. He demanded his rights as a Roman citizen when they were violated. That didn't mean he didn't have a first and foremost commitment to Jesus Christ. What it meant was, he could multitask. We can, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We can serve our Lord Jesus Christ and say, as an American citizen, you will not, Mr. President, violate my constitutional rights. Now, now if, if you took a survey of just about everybody, and you asked them if they've ever heard the term, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, I guarantee you almost everybody's heard that. The president's heard that. Kathleen Sebelius has heard that. But I'll bet you very few people know the context in Scripture that that refers to. Read Exodus 21. Exodus 21 tells you about two men who are fighting, and if those two men that are fighting accidentally injure a pregnant woman in the midst of that fight, and she gives birth prematurely as a result of the fighting, it says, if there is no lasting harm, and it's referring to the baby, if there is no lasting harm, the men shall pay a fine according to what the courts will allow. However, if there is lasting harm, talking about to the baby, then you shall pay eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, foot for foot, burn for burn, stripe for stripe, 
How ironic that the description in Exodus 21 so clearly describes the way that abortions are done today. And secondly, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, is referring to, from God's word, the penalty for what you do to unborn children. That's the context of eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. So few people know that. You know, I think about the way that presidents of the United States used to talk publicly. George Washington, on May 12, 1779, was addressing the Delaware Indian chiefs. Now, these were a religious group of people. They practiced a different religion than Christianity. George Washington said to them publicly, quote, You would do well to wish to learn our arts and ways, and above all, the religion of Jesus Christ. This will make you a greater and happier people than you already are. Congress will do everything they can to assist you in this wise intention. Now, what do you think would happen today if any president of the United States said to any group of religious people, you need to know Jesus Christ. This will make you a better and happier people. Oh, and by the way, Nancy Pelosi, Harry Reid, and all of Congress will do all they can to assist you in this. What kind of skin marks do you think would be left in the parking lot of the ACLU as they try to take this case to court? But guess what? That is the actual founding of our country. Amen. This is what America was founded upon. Not forcing us to violate our conscience and forcing us to violate biblical principles with this despicable HHS mandate, which must, must, must go down. Amen. So. Let me, let me in closing just share with you regarding Obamacare and regarding the HHS mandate and how important this is. Folks, there's so many reasons to oppose this, and we all know this. As Christians, this violates what we stand for. As Americans, this violates the Constitution. But I understand that there are some people that don't think about their conscience, they don't think about the Constitution, all they think about is their own pocket. Well, even for those people, let me encourage you, when you're at work talking with your friends, your family, your co-workers, if they don't care about conscience, if they don't care about Scripture, if they don't care about the Constitution, and all they care about is their pocket, will you please remind them of something? They are going to see over the course of the next couple of years, as Obamacare gets fully implemented in 2013 and 2014, they will see for themselves their take-home pay reduced. They will see for themselves the memo that they get from their employer saying, we can no longer offer health insurance, you're on your own, and now they're going to have to go through some government exchange program. They will see for themselves their doctors say, I'm sorry, we can no longer take this insurance plan, and they're forced to switch doctors. They will see. You're going to have to switch doctors, you're going to have to switch insurance companies, you're going to lose your insurance through your own employer, and you're going to have less take-home pay. Even for your greedy co-workers that aren't Christian, that should matter to them, but it means we have to speak up, we have to talk, we have to share with people the truth of what this is. we got 18 days. Elections do matter. Robert, you're absolutely right. This election counts, and this is our one and less, last and best chance to stop Obamacare and stop this HH mandate from transforming this nation to something that our founding fathers could absolutely not stomach. Let's stand strong. Thank you so much for being part of this. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's stand together united and take this down. God bless.